We've got pedigree of doing this for years and years and it's just evolved. The principles are still the same, but we've evolved it and we're doing it, I believe, better than anyone else at the moment in the world. We always find that in the beginning clients are dubious about the use of observational method because they have certain preconceived views on it. If you've got people who are capable and understand the ground and able to predict behaviour, you have a better chance of getting the results that you need. And we are one of the leaders in observational method. We've got some really talented people that are doing this work, are able to provide the results that the clients need. We've had you know, success, not just in Crossrail, in, uh, in the HS2, we've also applied in Northern Line Extension, we used it at Heathrow Airport previously, and going back even in Channel Tunnel. There's a history of people just designing for everything from the beginning. And we need to get to a place where we shouldn't be designing out all of the challenges. You know, if you have a low probability event that may occur in 50, 60 years, we need to get to a place where we can adapt to what you observe as you go along. And that's not just about underground structures, it can be on earthworks, because we will get to a place where, you know, we've got more water coming in because rainfall may increase in certain areas, certain places it may dry up. It's hard to predict what climate change is going to uh, lead to in terms of in the ground, but we can use adaptive design to, to manage that as a, as a risk. And, and observational method is just one of the tools that can be applied in that. So I think for graduates, you've got to get the basics right first. Once they've got the fundamentals right, they can then bring in all of the various tools. And the exciting thing is that they can do a lot of things much faster than we were able to do. Um, and it also gives them the opportunity to use software that has powerful engines that allow quite sophisticated, complicated models to be built and analyzed and give you information and predictions that we wouldn't have even dreamed of 30 years ago. So it's very exciting. And then you've got the ability to be able to calibrate that against real-time measurements of whatever you're doing. Because the data that we get not only from the analysis, but the measurements that we get from the ground, we can use together to calibrate. And that's the exciting thing.